three reasons why your website doesn't bring clients. That's a little harsh. That's a little harsh, but it's it's also a little real too, because I have seen I have seen this happen so many times over, and I want to make sure that you guys are not missing the mark. Hey Michelle, hey Maya, what's good, Toya? Good morning, good to see you all here. Um, feel free to share the room in your hallway. I mean, not really your hallway because the hallway isn't there anymore, but. You know, just with your friends, you can message them, you can connect with them, and um, feel free to be here. This is going to be one of those exciting mornings. Um, I should have started this a little earlier, but I was like, you know what? Some people, they're waking up early. I don't know how early everyone wakes up, and I wake up really early. Like, I'm up at five. So I was thinking, maybe, let me push it a little bit, and um, we'll be here for an hour. So I'm going to give some people some time, you know, get your morning routine, and just, you know, come listen and learn something new and and make a decision for 2024 um, today, really. Um, and I would like you guys to take action because I have some really good stuff for you today. So thank you for being here. Appreciate you. Welcome, Leah and Amanda. Good morning. Good to see you here. Um, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure being in this space with you. So yeah, I'm excited to um, connect and give you some things that you can Talk about, think about, process, and ask yourself, you know, what position are you in right now that's going to give you the best result? And more importantly, how can you create a space where you can create the experience that you want for your business and more, most importantly, understand where they are and how you can help them? So... I'm going to start off by asking this question. Put a one in the chat if you have a website and put a two in the chat if you don't have a website. I want to first, let's get that clear before I get started with today, because I want to make sure that if you're listening, it's going to help you too. So put a one in the chat if you have a website, put a two in the chat if you don't have a website. Okay, Maya says one, Leah says 1.5, okay? I'm glad that you're working on it. And put a three if you don't, you don't like, you, you just don't know what's happening. You know, put a three because some people don't also know about the websites. I don't want to assume that. So one and 1.5, okay. So I'll say maybe others that don't have it or maybe don't need it. Um, I, I, can't, I can't say that. I, I can't speak on that. What I know is what I know. So... Thank you so much, you know, Maya and Leah as well. Um, Toya says in process. Okay, thank you for that feedback. Anything that you guys give me as feedback is well appreciated. So you can tell me how you want to process it or tell me how you want to say it, but at least I know. So, okay, so we got a couple ones. Okay, so this is the right room for the discussion. Cool, awesome. Thank you as well, Michelle. And welcome, Elaine and Candice. All right, so I'm going to get right into this. And as you're listening, feel free to click the link above and put your first name and your email, get redirected to the calendar so you can get on a call with me. There are some questions that you're going to fill. And one question I really want to know from you before we get on a call is what is your 2024 marketing plan? If you have one and if you're in the process of making one, what is your ultimate goal? So when you answer those questions, and you get it, you'll be able to have that. And then once you, I'm just telling you what the experience is going to be before you do it. Once you click this link here, you're going to leave your first name and email. Then you're going to get redirected to get into the calendar, book a call with me this month. I would love to meet you this month in December to know what your goal is for January, for Q1, for 2024 in general. So we can talk about it in 30 minutes. And then within that call, you'll be able to get, you know, 30% off our services, which I'll explain, you know, when we get on the call and that can really give you a way to set off, you know, in the right way. Cause there's some things I'm working on that you have access to when we work together. That's not just based on price. It's also based on experience. So once you click on that and you schedule your call with me, then you're going to have access to my digital business card. So you can save my phone number. 
You can save my email. You can save my links. I will also would love to get your contacts. So it's also in my database. And then we can start connecting from there because Clubhouse is one place I've met people in person. I've also met people online, virtually, that I've been friends with and connections with for like years because I've been here for three years. So I'm excited that I want to really connect with more of you that want to really take this seriously. So here's the first thing for those who said they have a website. I want to get right into it. The first reason why your website doesn't bring clients, the very first reason is that, how do I put this? Your content is outdated because, and that's the first one, because a lot of people have websites from statistics, right? There are over 1.9 billion, billion web websites. Welcome, Mimi. 1.9 billion websites in the world right now. And not every website has traffic. Not every website has even web pages because some websites are bought and some domains are bought but they never have a face. They never have, it's like buying a, it's like buying land and you don't build on that land property, right? You just have the title deed, but you have access to the land, but you don't have any asset on top of the asset you've already gained to improve the value or increase that. It can do it, or, you know, it can do it by itself. You can have a domain for five years. You can have land for five years, but if you build on that land, then you're going to exponentially grow faster than you would just have the land by itself. So point is, you don't have outdated, you have outdated content, meaning if you built this website in 2020 and you never went back to it, you paid someone to do this website for you. You started a business, you paid someone, it looks great, great. And I go to your website and when I go to the bottom of the homepage, it tells me copyright 2020. It means that to me, maybe to someone else, it might mean something different, but to me looking at it from outside looking in, I'll be like, the two reasons, these are the two reasons, possible reasons. Either you haven't updated your website totally from the beginning, meaning that if you've updated any page on your website, that homepage should also be updated too, because the current year has to match the homepage. Right. When you come to my house, when you when you're driving right now, you know, you're, when you drive around your neighborhood, you get to see people. Right. When you drive around your neighborhood, you get to see, you know, Christmas lights, you get to see all these things. So it shows you that this is the mood. Right. This is my home. This is my property. And this is what you can see on my property. Right. When somebody drives and drives around there and they see that, that means, OK, yeah, it's Christmas time. You see all the lights. So when, when someone, I'm giving you guys real examples because I don't like making SEO sound like this scientific discovery that is so far-fetched. I want you guys to really understand it. That's why I bring it really down to literal examples that you can apply. So when I talk about cars and I talk about things, I love those things, you know, you can relate with them. You also get to know who I am a little bit too, right? So if I'm confusing you, please stop me. <laughs> Put in the chat, raise your hand bring up, you know, let's talk. I'll be here till about 8.30 um, a.m. Eastern. And I'm based in Georgia, by the way. So I'm based in Atlanta. So for those who are local as well, you know, it's always good to connect because you never know where someone can be. And I usually, you know, have great experiences when I connect with clients and people within the state and travel. And I love to travel too. So it's one of those things I love doing with my business and with my team that we can be able to really see things, you know, from different spaces. Now, um, good morning, Mimi. I see you in the chat too. Maya says, I have a new website and I need to update the SEO. I mean, oh, you're in Georgia too. Great. You see? You see what I'm talking about? <laughs> good to see you and connect with you. That's good. You see, you never know what happens on Clubhouse. So that's for me. If you don't say anything, you will never know anything. So for me, I always stay in connections and I always make sure that these rooms have that experience and you have to create that experience yourself. So I'm glad that you have a new website. Congratulations on that too. And I know that you need to update the SEO. This is the most important thing. 
And it's, it's one of the reasons why your website doesn't bring clients in, in the topic for today, because I started with the first one, which is content, right? A lot of people build websites and the content is not updated, meaning let's say you hired someone to do your website. They did, let's say, five blogs, right? Just to add content, just to add the aesthetics, right? That article three years later is not being seen because it's not updated. And there are thousands, millions of pages that have been built within the last three years to talk about the same thing you talked about three years ago, right? So if you don't update that content, if you don't update that blog, let's say you talked about, let's give an example. Maya, put in the chat for me, like, what's your website about? And I build using Wix. I use Wix too. <laughs> so I use Wix. We build websites, WordPress, Squarespace, Wix, you know, you know, do that. We, we go the whole, you know, Tilda as well. That's a, another website builder too. You know, Figma, Shopify, and Alyssa is here too. Amazing guy too that I know who does amazing stuff with websites too. So I'm, I'm glad that you use Wix. I love using Wix too. So it's a funding agency. Okay, bet. All right. So now, and I'm glad that you gave me that example because I wanted to use this in context so that we can understand it, right? So if you have a website, and you talked about something to do with funding. Let's say there's a high peak season when funding is done in the year. I, I wouldn't know, I can't speak on that, but I'll just you know give a, a timestamp and say, okay, within tax season, this is the time you can be able to do so do that. Or talk about something financial literacy based that's gonna help someone make a financial decision. Now, when you read that article, let's say in February of 2022, for example, just for example, hypothetically, by February 2023, that same topic is going to be searched, right? So whoever shows up on the first page of Google is a person that's going to get the most clicks, the most responses, the most engagement, the most scrolls because they are being seen. So if I wrote about it last year and I gave you statistics of 2021, and then in 2022, sorry, 2023, I wrote it again and gave you stats and updated the article on stats from 2022. And then maybe I'm, I'm in 2023 now and I can forecast the results for 2026 and then put it in a graph or put it in a, you know, some type of, of way. And there's some ways you can use schema, which is another way of pretty much layering SEO to what you already have in text, because SEO is not just about the writing or the text or the copy or even the images, those things are important. But what also is important is how you position your website. Well, Rocky, happy Clubhouse birthday. Wow. Okay. Hey, good to see you. How are you doing? It's too early for all that loud noise favor. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, I'm well. I'm just waking up. Awesome. Awesome. You know, I've been up since five, so I think that's probably why I'm like this. But yeah, I get I've this. been up since five, too. I think I'm just now waking up, though, because I just got my coffee. So, oh, true. Well, good to have you here, Rock. It's always uh, an amazing time here. And we just started on the first one, so we're still early into the the topics. I'm glad I did it at 7.30. Something I was saying, just move the time back a little bit. So I'm glad I did. So Maya, we were just talking about, you know, her platform, you know, with um, funding agency. So I would write content about it, how to get funding. That's, I believe that's a big question that searched on Google, how to get funding. So if you know the answer to that, you should be the person that people should respond to. And if you're in Georgia and you're creating content, there's a way we can even localize the content so that you can get accurate response and feedback. Just last week, just to give an example of how this is, is crazy, one of our clients right now, they've been on Instagram for forever and they just crossed over half a million um, views on their reel. And because, and, be, and the year prior, I think their highest ever was 247K on Instagram and we ran a campaign, a paid campaign that's running right now, it's like a giveaway campaign and it's gone over the roof. 
and we're already getting so much data that it's allowing us to get more leads and it's also giving us more accuracy into content management because we're also looking at YouTube as an extension and using Pinterest as also, also in another way because I don't know if you guys know this but just a little caveat over 80% of Pinterest users also use Instagram. So if you think about the over 92.7 million active users in the US using Pinterest, you can really think about how people are making financial decisions. So now to your point, Mia, if you now talk about you know funding and how to get funding, you put that on Pinterest, that is also on your website, you're building out content, you're also spreading that you know within your social channels. Before you know it, people can find you outside Google because they're inside their communities. And what do I mean by that? If people are on Pinterest searching for things about how to get funding, and then they see your beautiful image there with a nice heading, you know, with your colors, with your brands, because even 97% of searches on Pinterest are unbranded. So you put it there and you just position it. This is what's going to happen when when you do this for outdated content that can turn into fresh content. When you put out that content, let's say in February 2022, and then when February 2023, you go back to that article on your website, and then you update that content, and then you resubmit it to Google, Google is going to send a signal to Pinterest, and Pinterest is going to restore that algorithm because it's also being refreshed within the data feeds. So whatever someone clicks on on Pinterest a year later is the updated content that you gave and priority to Google to signal. So what that means, it sounds a little far-fetched, but what that means is that as long as you are going back to your website and looking at articles that you published prior to date, and you're updating that information with recent content that is going to add value to the conversation, then you are going to be the person that Google is going to look for and find as a resource to give first priority to because you positioned yourself with content that people can read. Now, the next question might, might come and say, okay, there are thousands, millions of people doing the same thing. So how am I going to be seen in a million of C pictures and so many things are happening and I'm not the only one talking about it? There are ways you can now go past that. Because when you start writing articles and you start putting yourself in positions where you can be seen outside your website, then people can start trusting you because they found you from another place. Just like, hey, how did you find this restaurant? Oh, my friend told me about it. How did you find out about this hotel? Oh, I just searched on Google and I read the reviews. They came from somewhere. So wherever they're coming from, you want to make sure that you're there. So that when they come to where you're supposed to be or where they need to be to make that that result happen for them then you've brought them into a place where they can feel welcome so that's the first thing that i wanted to talk about with outdated content so first key point key take action is this if you are writing articles on your website if you're planning to write articles on your website make sure that every month every quarter if you write four articles in a month make sure you update at least 50% of that, two of them. If you can do all, better. If you have 20 articles and you can do 50% of them, that's about 10. You can update those 10, spread those 10 across the month so that you're not doing them at a, at, you know, at a, at a batch. Some people can do it at once if you have a team that can do it even better. Someone like Neil Patel, he says for every one article that they publish, they go back and update about seven on average. So for every one that they publish, they update seven. Do you know what that means? That you're literally surging the internet with a refreshed status of your website because Google is not going to look for your website every day. There are billions of websites out there to search. So what's going to make you stand out is how you position yourself. And the second point to why your website does not bring clients is because you don't focus on the marketing piece. This is another thing to consider because if you are getting content, this content is driving traffic. Yes, it's updated. Great. You have traffic. Yes, I'm getting thousands of impressions. Okay. How many leads are you getting from those impressions? Do you have a pop-up? Do you have an opt-in page? 
Do you have a, a, a link that someone can click on? Do you have a heading? Do you have something that someone can use and say, okay, I like what this person is saying. I've never met them before. Now I want to learn more about it. Here's a free guide to getting your first five top secrets to get funding. Boom. They leave their first name and email. Now they're getting emails from you and they're not unsubscribing. Especially when you look at your analytics and you see like who's clicking on your emails. How long have, been, have they been there? There are some people I checked on my, on my email CRM just yesterday and I was like, okay, let me see the people who have opted into my website, you know, just naturally because we don't run ads, you know, for our business. We help other businesses if they want to run ads. So we go on Google, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, even LinkedIn, and now Spotify. So we go in there and make sure that your voice is heard, your business is seen. So, and your brand is recognized and experienced. That's the key frame there. That's the key objective. So when you think about the marketing piece, get all that traffic, update your content, but also make sure that you have a place where they can leave their contact information. Imagine if I go to a great networking event, a great networking event. I've met CFOs, I've met CMOs, I've met people, I've met so many new people, right? But I left there with zero contacts, zero LinkedIn requests, zero emails. That would have been the worst investment of your life. Not because you didn't do anything, but because you didn't take action. You took action to take a flight. You took action to get a hotel. You took action to drive there. You took an action to get an Uber. You took an action to, to get a Turo. You took action to do this. You took action, but you forgot to leave your contact information with a prospect that you could follow through. I've been on a plane before and I leave my, my, <laughs> I leave my contact because I have a pop hole so you can just scan my, my code and then you leave my contact. I've been on the plane and I'm talking to someone and then all of a sudden, you know, you have my business contact three months down the line, we're working together or I refer you to someone or I learn something new. You meet new people every day, but how many new people do you stick and connect with? Not many. We drive every day, but how many people do we talk on the road with? Now, many, you might see a friend across the road. Hey, what's up? What are you doing over here? That's probably one in a million cars that you could see in a week that could do that same experience twice. So for you to get people to read your content, you have to make sure you have to bring them in. One of the best ways to advertise your business, advertise your podcast, advertise your blog is by having emails contacts, people, connections. It's a big thing. I went to my analytics and I tried to see, okay, who are the people this year who have been, you know, opt into my website, opt into the business, and let me see their names. So I check their names and then I go to LinkedIn and I send a request. And then the ones that I sent a request, it now tells me, oh, this person viewed your profile. This person viewed your profile. This year, Clubhouse, LinkedIn, and of course, Google, have brought in the business for our business, right? Clubhouse, LinkedIn, Google. And I think Rocky asked me this question some time ago when she was putting me on the hot seat. <laughs> and it was like, which platforms, you know, bring, you know, the business revenue? Where, where do you spend your time? You, like, I'm not being paid to do this on Clubhouse. I'm not being paid to be here, but the dedication I have to help and to serve and to teach and to show up is beyond the amount of money I could ever be paid because I know if someone's life has changed, if someone's family is transformed, if someone moves, it's great. I've worked with people who I, I just work with on my team and they're designers and now they're in the, like one of them, for example, I started working with him a year ago and now he relocated to the UK and now he's pursuing his, his degree, you know, his master's and he's doing better because I'm working with him and he's doing great work and we're working together and you know we have those connections so it's remote and we're very flexible because we're dealing with different time zones and I had to learn that and discipline that through my podcast because someone would send me a request to be on the podcast show and they're all the way in Melbourne so I have to be up at 6 a.m. to do the podcast that's dedication so you don't see those things on Clubhouse you don't see those things outside I don't talk about them all the time but the people I connect with, those are people that I connect with dearly because I know that there's a, there's a purpose, there's a reason why they're doing this. So when I'm telling you that you have to create experiences for people, it starts with how you position yourself on your website. 
let people see you. Let people have those content update, updated. If something has changed, go update it. If you had, if you added a new button, if you added a new link, if you added a new social channel, go refresh it. Because if you don't add these things and put them on the search console, then there's going to be a big problem along the way. And that problem can actually like cost you your business. You may not feel it because you didn't experience it, but if you actually thought about it and actually saw the potential, you'd be like, damn, I actually lost a lot of money on the table because I didn't position myself in a way. If you get two followers, be excited because you had zero last year around this time, right? If you have a hundred new followers, be grateful for those things. You know, I, for me, I'm thinking about what I'm grateful for. Like my birthday is on December 26th and I'm thinking back and I'm like, I'm grateful for all these things, experiences, my own life. Oh I'm my like, God, that's my <laughs> sister's birthday. Hey, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, I have. <laughs> I have one sister's birthday is the 24th and the others is the 26th. That's lit. That is lit. Okay. Now I know. <laughs> well, I'll That's never forget lit. your birthday now. So there you go. Hey, <laughs> appreciate you. Yeah. I was born on a Sunday. And I think that's why I'm always so happy. So it's, it's just it's just the thing about me. I just give happy, good vibes. Anytime, business, personal, friendship, that's just me. Anytime around me, it's vibes. <laughs> Lisa is laughing because he knows. You know, it's, it's, it's cool stuff, you know. And hey, Lisa, good morning, you know. Good vibes. <laughs> How you doing, Lisa? Just wanted to acknowledge you. How you doing? Good morning. What you up to? Are you having some some tea? What's What's going on? I'm so sorry. I was multitasking. Good morning, everyone. I was scheduling my room for Friday. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. But I was listening, and I do have your birthday in my plan. <laughs> hey, thank you, Lisa. Appreciate and you. So I just woke you. up. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. I want to do more morning rooms like this. And I think um, that's something I want to start doing even in the new year, just creating that intention. Because people ask, when do you do rooms? And I'm like, I can't say because I don't know. So I have to be intentional and literally fix it like I fix it, you know, with meetings. So I'm going to start doing that differently for the new year. So thank you for being here, everybody. Good morning. Hey, Maya. Maya came up. Good to see you. Would love to hear from you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I have a, um, a quick question, favor. Other than like blog posts to use, I guess, utilize SEO to bring people to your website, like what are some other small things that we can do um, in SEO space to attract those people from um, Google and such? Ooh, good question. And I know you're asking probably because you don't like writing. Right. I don't. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll be honest, 100%, I never used to love reading, like, back background story. I never used to love reading. When we used to go to the library back in school, I used to hate it. I'm like, why am I going to the library? I don't want to read all these books. This is boring. You know, but as I grew, I was like, now nah, I'm, I'm, I'm an avid reader. I just love reading and learning new things. So I don't like writing as much, but because of what I've now discovered with AI, and I put that into the Demystifying SEO course where you can be able to create experiences by saving time instead of writing all the time is having the ai to sound like you and it sounds crazy but it's possible because i've been doing a lot of research so to your question I'm sorry, just to interrupt really quickly i literally i'm on chat gpt and I, I always put um right in the tone of a female alex hermosi and it works every time you see so exactly I do use ChatGPT though. So I have two blogs on my website right now. I just, and they're fully written blogs. I just haven't, you know, added the pictures and went back and like did some SEO or whatever. Like I haven't done that yet. So I got the blog. I just haven't, you know, posted them yet. Okay. So great. So I'm glad that you said you haven't done the pictures because this is what's going to make the difference for you. This is an exercise I want you to do. And I, I really want you to click this link up here so that we can get on a call. And I want to see that, you know, from your screen, because that's going to also help us make that, you know, needle move. And when you upload this picture, this is also one of the reasons that your website doesn't bring clients in 
today's topic and I have a bonus for you. I have three plus one. The, the third reason, because the question you just asked is the perfect segue into the third part. The third reason why your website doesn't bring clients is because your images are not compressed. It sounds like what? Compressed? What does that have to do with anything? Everything. Because you're putting your website on a on a on a on a server, on, on the cloud, like in a space, right? Where everybody is going to find access to your website. Whether they live in the US, whether they live in Canada, whether they live in you know, Finland, Australia, wherever they live in, they're gonna have access to that website as long as they have a link. So if the images are not compressed and it takes someone three seconds longer to open up that website, the chances of you being shown to that same zip code or same IP address is low, is reduced because you gave a bad experience to the consumer that wanted to have access to information that you couldn't deliver on time. That's why Amazon is doing so well because they prioritize on delivery and convenience. So when you upload your images, make sure your images are compressed. You can use a website like compressor.io if you don't use Adobe, because I use Adobe, I have the Adobe suite. But you can use compressor.io, it's a free platform where you can upload the image, um, maximum is 10 megabytes. If you, have a, if you have an image bigger than 10 megabytes, you need to take that thing down and you have to use Adobe because you probably use a DSLR camera or something really high defined to get to that size of the camera. Because most times, you know, quality images are from a megabyte up maybe three, four, five, but it shouldn't be that heavy. But you want to make sure when you upload your images to your website, you want to make sure that they're compressed to at least 500 kilobytes and below. That's specific because if you have anything above that, fine, it's cool. I mean, there's really no threshold. You can really do what you want. But if you want to get the best results and you want to stick to the best practices, then keeping it, keeping it under that 500 kilobytes is great and you don't determine how many kilobytes it's going to be so if and the lower it is the better the lower it is the better because you can put an image on that and upload it and say okay this is my image and it's two megabytes and then it compresses it to, for you and it ends up being around let's say 72 kilobytes that's perfect the image is not compromised the quality is not compromised it's a lossless format and then you now upload that image to your website. Now, there's something I usually talk about with clients in the mastermind that I go a little bit deeper into that with the images, but I won't bring this here because this is the top level. But Maya, if you do that with your images and after compressing them, you rename that file according to the topic. So let's, let's role play real quick. What's the name of one of the articles you want to publish? What's the title? Hold on one second. I'm actually going to it so I can, can find it here. Okay, so I think the first article is about uh, funding and trucking. One second. I know that's right, Maya. We have our computers and laptops ready, okay? <laughs> At all times, if y'all didn't catch that. Yes, ma'am. Um, let's see. Okay, so this one is dodging loan sharks and nailing, nailing funding with. I gotta work on that title because yeah, I don't know, I don't even like that. But like I said, I just went through ChatGPT and um, just put it on here. I haven't been through it to like redefine it or whatever. But um, but yeah, dodging loan sharks and and getting access to funding. Okay, so access to funding is what I heard as the key keyword right or correct me no, if i'm wrong right. okay so access to funding i'm literally typing it right now okay so have you ever done this on google do you use chrome or safari i use google chrome google chrome okay i'll also give you guys a quick pro tip i don't like saying this all the time but i think it's also good for you guys to check out um if you download a browser called brave it's privacy enabled and does exactly what Chrome does. 
um, Brave is amazing. Um, it's a privacy-enabled browser, and they also have an AI module in there too, and it's free. So if you want to get the paid, it's cool, but they have a free browser. So check it out, just letting you know, Maya. But I love Chrome too. Chrome is amazing. Now, if you're on Chrome, go to google.com and then type in, or just type in because you're already on Google Chrome, at the top, type in access to funding and don't don't hit enter yet. What do you see? Okay, so there is access to funding, meaning opportunities for small business, um, access to work funding, access to work funding, ADHD, I don't know what that is, but access to he funded it's a lot of stuff coming up down here mm -hmm. so these are the keywords <laughs> these are the keywords that need to be on your blog so for example access to funding meaning do you have that text in writing on your copy within your copy for your article i have to go back and check but i don't think so just reading just remembering the the text from the i don't think so Okay, so that's the first thing. So normally when I look at Google suggestions, I look at it from top down. So for me, I kind of have like a, I don't know if it's a sixth and third eye or some type of scientific vision, but I'm a visual person. And I think it's because I'm also rhythmic with beats and bars, more like a kind of static learner because I'm a self-taught drummer. Is when you look at it from top down, you can see that access, if you look at the words as well, don't just look at the words, look at the way the words are, are formatted. Some of the words have bold in them, right? And some of them don't have bold in them. Some of them are regular text, some of them have bold in them. The reason why, right. So the reason why the, the ones that are bold is because you triggered that keyword, that phrase match, that exact phrase match, access to funding. So you're gonna see the top four have bold and then from the fifth down all the way to the ninth result don't have funding but it has funding after like work or justice and then the last one is access funding services reviews so i always look at the top i look at it like a like a like a burger kind of let me just to make it simple because i love to make things simple i look like like a burger on oreo Right. I look at the top, I look at the bottom and I look at what's inside. So I look at access to funding. That's the very first thing. Right. I now look at the bottom, which is access funding services reviews. So that tells me top to the top of funnel to bottom of funnel. Someone wants to learn how to access funding and use reviews as a way to make an informed decision on what to do with their finances. So where that comes in for you is your website will now have to start bringing people in where they can learn the meaning, the opportunities for small businesses. And those are the first four that you see. So if you have an article that says, you know, your website.com forward slash post forward slash, you know, access dash funding, because when you use the word to, a lot of people don't really see that. But when you use the word, when you use conjunction words in your, in your, in your URLs, your URL stands for um, URL stands for Uniform Resource Locator. So if your Uniform Resource Locator has filters in between, then it also alters your projection to grow at a larger scale. What do I mean? If if somebody, if your competitor has the same information that you have and talks about the same thing you're talking about, but definitely has two different experiences because you're both unique they have their website with the url access dash to dash funding but you have access dash funding now the word to is considered as a stop word so anytime we're typing on google search anytime we're typing anywhere anytime we're typing on a search engine the words we use in conjunction to the keywords semantically are going to direct the filter that's going to give the result or the desired result. So if you want someone to type in access to funding for small businesses, then you're going to have an article talking about access dash funding dash small dash businesses. So I took off the two and I took off the four. 
two and four. That that's rhythmic. Two and four. That's nice. So I so access to funding for small businesses. You've now used four keywords that people search, and now you have that responsibility now to give them that resource. Meaning, on your article within your article, you start creating a listicle, or you start creating. You can say here here are the top ten, you know, um, access to funding, um, you know corporations or well, institutions that you can you know find for small businesses and then you list them down you give them and then if you have affiliate links in there also give them a disclaimer because you also want to do that ethically you know as a business and let them know hey if you click on any of these links it's going to lead you to i'm going to get a commission so just let them know in transparency so they also trust your brand so all those layers that you're putting in together they're little things that go a long way because when you get that first person that signs up to your mailing list and then they they inquire about your services and then you give them a great experience, they're going to leave a review. Then you're going to rinse and repeat. You're going to now work with that and keep going. So when you now use each of these responsibilities and say, okay, this is the meaning, here are opportunities, you're putting them into your website, you're writing them, it's great. And now because you don't like writing or you don't love to you know, write as much and you're looking for an alternative, one great alternative is images. So you can use infographics as well. So the same information that you want to tell someone in writing, get it done. You know, like the Ty is saying with your Canva, it's a great tool and you can also use it to resize and optimize your images for website, which is true. So if you use that and you're using images and you have like a full infographic that has all the details, it looks like a ladder, you make it animated, you make it really nice, you know, it's it's a good way for you to see it, you know, in a different light. It starts to bring more responsibility for you to show them more than you can tell them. That's really where that concept comes from. Hey, I'm showing you, here's how to access funding, step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. Step six, contact me. When you've done that, You've given them five steps and an additional step to make because you're actually join, you're doing it with them. Because a lot of people feel like, how do I get access to funding? I'm a small business. I've only been doing business for a year. And the eligibility requirement needs you to have at least three years because of tax and, and everything that you have to you know, submit. So it gets stressful. But there are people who can get access to it if they have good credit, You know, if they want to get a line of credit. So the way you can position it and talk about it in so many different ways and then use infographics to explain it, it makes it someone, it makes it easier for them to understand. Because now they're not just listening to you, they're not just learning from you, they're experiencing what you want them to experience. And now their experience is going to enhance your feedback because what they tell you is now what you're gonna start doing to make sure they have a better experience. So eventually, you have one article in text because you still need text. Don't don't ignore it. Don't just go crazy on infographics the whole way. But if you say in a year, I want to do 10 articles. In a month, I want to do maybe one a week. You know, it's up to you. The more, the better. The more, more is more. The more, the better. So if you decide and say, okay, I'm going to do one article in text format. I'm going to do one with an infographic to explain the, you know, the text. Then you can use that as interlinking strategies that can be able to build opportunities. And then where you start to see the responses and where the closing of the deals come in is where I talked about earlier when you have a great website and you have an email opt-in so that the people that you're sending these emails to, let's say you got featured on my podcast, for example, and you talked about this, which I would love to have you on the podcast to talk about this too for businesses because you know most of our audiences, they're homeowners. Um, we know what they like to listen to. They like to listen to rap. They love to listen to Afrobeat. They love to listen to pop music. We know that they love to listen to business podcasts, society and culture, and also religion and spirituality. And for me, it's God first. So I already know where my audience is. They're homeowners. I know the top location is San Jose, California. We're already covering over 50, 50 or 50 states, you know, in the U.S. plus the sub-regions. And at the same time, 80% of our audience is in the U.S. and 20% is in the rest of the world. When I look at those statistics and I'm able to bring someone on board and they are able to shine their light and then we're running as a business ads on Spotify to reach new people, your voice gets heard, your episode gets heard. Then they check you out. They're like, oh, let me go check out Maya's website. 
and they start reading about all the articles you've talked about. They start binging on your articles. They start you know, signing up to your email list. And then every week you're sending them a, a, an email or every month you're sending them a newsletter telling them here are all the latest additions to our website. These are the things that we've done. If you do that consistently for 12 months, you will increase so much that you will start to get a lot of people actually reach out to you because you've positioned yourself on the internet where you can be dominant, especially if you're starting from local, which there's a way we can do it with images and mapping. Then from there, you can start to build out your business long term. And then two years from now, three years from now, people are still signing up to your mailing list without you having to lift a finger because you already did the work. How does that sound, Maya? I could even hit the button fast enough, but that sounds good. <laughs> That sounds like something I'm, I'm I'm trying to do, especially with this website, so that, like you said, people sign up to the website and I'm not even doing anything, or it, it starts, like, getting to a point where I'm bringing in traffic, leads, without me having to do so much on other social media platforms is, like, what I'm aiming for. Exactly, because according to some statistics that I've been I've been looking at, there, there, are, there are billions of blogs that are produced every single day, but there are hundreds of millions of, I'll just, let me just keep it in the millions. There are millions of podcasts that are produced, meaning that the threshold is better for you to be on audio for 2024 if you really will position yourself to be an authority because people are listening to people now. I mean, we, we've been listening to people, but now we want to get better experiences. So if, according to iHeart, they said in the U.S. alone, there are more podcast listeners in the U.S. than Netflix subscribers, that should send you signals that should tell you that either I can be a guest on podcasts I want to be in, and you can be in platforms like Podmatch, like Matchmaker, you, there are so many platforms out there that you can you know, be a guest on or just manually go to them and check or have your own and create your own castle, like I like to call it, and then build your own castle. You know, there's a lot of sand. You know, there are a lot of people that have podcasts, but in, in that beach, I know there's that one castle because I can see it. So if I build that castle and that castle is giving me attention, attraction, and people are coming to it, checking it out, they're leaving their contact information, they want to book a tour, you know, like they want to, you know, check. Before you know it, people start coming. People like good things. I like good things. You love good things, you know. I even saw in the, the chat, too, I didn't. I, I was scrolling up and I, I saw it, too. Leah, your, your daughter's birthday is the same day as my birthday. So that's amazing. I want to acknowledge that as well. Happy birthday to her. Capricorns in the building. So it's, it's great. It's great to see all these things happen. So if you really want to get people to see your content, Maya and anyone is also in the room, use your website as a fortress, as a castle to build a property that people can see from afar. And afar means a different country, a different state, a different zip code, right? Your website is public. It's published. When they say your website is live, it, it means it's live. <laughs> it's alive. Like someone can see it. But how many websites do we go to every day? Not many, but we all start from somewhere, possibly Google, right? Some people go to YouTube. So you have to position yourself. <laughs> I love that, Lisa Castle. Yeah. You know, you have to really think about it and see, you know, where that, what that looks like for you. What, where do you see yourself? Let, let me ask you this, Maya. A year from now, December 13, 2024, God willing, where do you see this website? Where do you see your business and where do you see this vision going? Um, I see this website um, taking life and like, it's, it's like I'm online right now, like I'm, I'm at home right now with this business, but I see it becoming like a brick and mortar and um, multiple locations and giving small business owners the, the outlet that they need to be able to get funding for their business. So I see it really growing. I see the same for you, especially because you're starting now. 
because if you use each quarter and you already know your business so each quarter if you tackle each problem each question within its season and then document it within your articles then those times will always be refreshed because each season there's going to be a new search and there's going to be a new opportunity so you want to position yourself where you've planted good seeds on good soil so that years from now new people can find you and you get new contacts you know and then putting it on pinterest is just the ultimate sauce because when you put it there it it builds out its long-term effect because a pinterest pin the lifespan of a pin is 3.5 months that's about 105 days so imagine someone three months from now is searching about something they want to do in the spring but they're searching now like the Christmas, I'll give you, I'll, let me just blow your, your minds a little bit, just a little bit. Do you know that, or did you know that the Christmas trees that people have today, a good percentage, a, a good percentage of them started on Pinterest as far back as April. People love to plan. I'm a planner. People love to plan, and sometimes I like to do things sporadically, spontaneously. It's also there's also fun in that, but you gotta plan it in a way. But you also gotta know what you're doing. So, if you plan and say, by this time next year, God willing, I will be doing this, then if you work backwards, you say, okay, what did I achieve quarter one, 2023, that I could do better quarter one, 2024. Okay, I didn't have articles then, now I do. I didn't have infographics then, now I do. I didn't have podcast episodes, now I do. I didn't have links, now I do. I didn't have emails, now I do. I didn't have a budget for running ads, now I do. Especially for you, Maya, when it comes to access to funding, which is what you want to show people. And a lot of small businesses want to learn that. So if I go to Google and I look at access to funding for small businesses, if you're still on your Google Chrome, what do you see? Um, access to meaning opportunity, access to access to funding for small businesses, access to work funding, access to work funding, ADHD, access to he funding access to work funding for employers, access to justice funding, and an access funding services review. Which one resonates the most with you? Um, Access to funding opportunities or, well, no, small business for small businesses. Okay. So if you go, I'm going to show you like another hack. So if you now type in access to funding for small businesses, what do you start seeing? The search is going to change. It does. Um, access to finance for smallholders, formers, where to get funding for small business, and where can small businesses get funding. That's what it changed. Okay. So hit on, on enter for the small business, and then it's going to give you the Google results. Right. Okay, so now go back to Google. Now, not the search bar, but the Google bar, the, the search box. Mm -hmm. And then just put the, just click on the mouse at the end of the businesses. Okay, so the, you got the 10,000 yeah. grants for small business, the free grants for, to, yeah. So yeah, it did change. Yeah, so, and you also see one that says, like for me, because we're in Georgia, you also see one that says Georgia too. Yeah, small business grants for Georgia, 5,000 small business grants for Georgia, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now imagine you writing articles on these specific topics. One article one article for $5,000 small business you know, grants, another one for 10,000, another one for free, another one for federal, another one for startup, another one for minority. Before you know it, you have probably five topics off one search that can get you compound interest on engagement. Do you see that? I do. And here I thought I had to go to the keyword planner and all this kind of stuff. I like this better. I like to make things easy.
it's it's so easy and i'm glad that you see this maya and anyone trying this please try it out too on your end and see what i'm seeing and see what we're seeing because when you start to really understand what they are actually searching for and you have the answer like we've not even gone into the search results we talk about google is great yes google is your best friend google is your bestie speaking of bestie um i'm excited because i'm also uh you know a kanye west fan too in a way it's, it's just so crazy because of you know music producer drama and everything and um if you guys check my instagram before it goes out northwest she's gonna be on the on kanye's new album and she was rapping on there and it's such a it was beautiful i saw it on tiktok and i've seen the other previews because i love seeing you know performance in action and you know northwest is she's killing it with the bars and everything so i saw that just to give you like a quick caveat you know when it comes to experience those are things that you know you can see that that can take off because someone knows that that's what you like. You know, you, you probably didn't know that we like to go to the same concerts, probably we've been in the same concert and we never knew each other then, you know? So when you think about the word clients, <laughs> look at Lisa, like I see you <laughs> You're looking at the, you know, the context, right? You have to really know, okay, you want to get more clients, but like strip down the word clients and just say, I want to get, I want to bring more people. That's really who you want to bring. Three three reasons why your website doesn't bring people. We are people. Yeah, we're clients. Yeah, we're doctors. Yeah, we're great. Yes, we're this. But we're people. And we all deserve a chance. And we all have greatness within us. So when you ask yourself, when was the last time I did something for the first time? And you don't have an answer then you have to rethink and ask, how can I do things better so that next year I'm positioned in a better space so I can do more things for more people? It goes down to the people. So if you have a business and your business doesn't bring people to your website and you're paying that domain every year, you're paying for updates, you're paying for subscriptions, you're paying for this, you're paying for that, but you're not paying attention to your data, then there's a problem because you want to make sure these people asking these specific questions can find you and when they find you it takes off the roof so that's that's the one i wanted to mention now i have a bonus for you guys i have a bonus this is going to be a very fun bonus this might be a little touchy but i want to make sure it hits home um i was going to end this earlier but i think we can spend about 30 more minutes here before we close before i get into my meeting so this is a bonus and i think i want to leave this one i want to like talk about this i want to hear you talk, talk about it lisa i want to hear in the chats i want to hear you talk about it maya and it's going to boil down to so many things but i want to make sure that we leave here with something we already covered two you know kind of yeah we've covered we've covered actually three yeah we've covered outdated content we've covered covered image compression we've covered you know when it comes to prioritizing your design for marketing but there's this one, this specific one, that when you hear, you'll be like, whoa, that's true. And this is it. Three reasons why your website doesn't bring clients or people. And I'm talking about your website. So when I think, when you think about your website, don't think about anything other than your business, right? Is stock templates. Stock templates stock photos it's touchy because you can use it and win and you can also use it and lose what do i mean by win or lose i mean if you have stock images and you download it from pixel or from unsplash and you upload it the same exact way that you downloaded it then that's a disservice to your business because if you are writing an article about a specific topic and you want to use this stock image for high efficiency, high deliverability, high recognition, and a high visual communication understanding, then you need to rename that file from whatever that file name is when you downloaded it to the title of your article that has a keyword specific indicated within that, name, that file, that name convention. Because when you use hyphens in your 
and I'm getting a red bar. So let me know if you guys can hear me. When you use your naming convention, when it's .jpg or .png or .webpage, .webp, when you're uploading these images, make sure you use hyphenated words, right? Because the hyphens are considered as spaces to the bots. So when you put spaces yourself, that's good. I mean, that's clean. But if you really want to make sure that you can literally crawl, you know when they say crawling the website, you're crawling the data, the data includes the text and the text includes the keywords and the keywords have information. So if you really want to be specific, then you put those keywords there, right? So that when you re-upload that stock image to, and you've compressed the image, you've put some metadata in there. If you can go that a little bit further, if you have Adobe, you can add some information in there and then you re-upload that same image to your website. Now, if someone in Georgia is looking for something like this and I'm using that stock image, because I've been able to use it as a targeting factor and not as a, a stock image, as a placeholder or a placement, then I'm getting more attraction to my website because when I inspect that element, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you guys have done this before, but when you inspect an element on your, on your Chrome, for example, if you use Chrome or, or, or um, Brave browser, even um, Firefox, if you use it too, when you right click on an image and any image on the internet, you can do it yourself. Right click on an image, just do this assignment, just be, if you're curious about it, right click on any image you see on the website, on any website you're on, whether it's a uh, Vogue, you know, whether it's uh, even if it's Gucci, whatever it is that you're on, whatever website you're on, it's a product page, a service page, whatever product you're on or whatever page you're on, right click on that image and then hit inspect element. What you're doing is that you're inspecting an element from an asset. Now, I, I told you all that I look at things scientifically in a way, like I kind of dissect things into different forms in my mind because I want to see things from different directions and also make an informed decision. So I don't just rush a decision. When you think about the word element, within an asset, it provides value for the property, right? So what's the element in my house that's going to bring business to my house? I have lighting, I have a camera, I have this, I have that. Now I'm bringing business because people can come in and get a service, right? So that's the element that I'm using to bring business for earned income, right? That's where you get to see the result of having an asset, you know, appreciated in value, right? So when you inspect the element, that element is an image. So that image has a file name. That image has an alt text. Why is it so important for, for social platforms these days to put alt text? Because of screen readability, you know, you also have to think about, you know, the visually impaired. You have to think about screen reading. You have to think about braille writing. You have to think about all those things that are very specific to our human form, to like us people, like how we connect with people outside just the text and the words, the meaning behind it. If you do that service to your business and you are specific and you look at that element and you're like, okay, this element that is being read from Google Chrome shows the exact URL it shows the name of the file because, you know, when you upload an image to the website, you're uploading it from a library. Whether you use Go High Level or Wix or WordPress, all those images are coming from a library, right? So that library, if you look at, this is crazy, guys. If you look at the, the inspect element and if you actually read the print, if you read the fine print, right, you're going to see one of them will say assets, especially the library. It will say assets. Why is it called an asset? Because it's an, it's an asset because it has value, right? So if you have an image that is an element that if someone sees that picture on your website, it's going to drive them to leave their contact information. That's an element in your business. That's an asset that could, you know, it could provide value long-term, right? So if you're doing that for your business and you're bringing that in, great. But you know what's even greater than a stock image? You, your image. So if you, you know, love cooking, like with Lisa, you know, I love working with Lisa because she's always bringing ideas. Like we're always like learning new things. So it's always exciting. And 
at the time, Lisa, I don't even remember when you talked about, you know, looking at the the images and then we're looking at the colors, like the red and the blue. And it was for one of the articles that we published and it was like we saw a difference in, you know, in the results because we focused on trying to see, okay, we're not just looking at the the image, we had to change it to the actual person because if someone sees it and they see that person, they can identify with that person instead of identifying with maybe just a color or an abstract image. So it changes the atmosphere because you see somebody in the kitchen, you know, you know, with a pen board and they're doing something so you can feel like, okay, yeah, that's usually me, you know, so how can I position myself there? So when you start seeing people, if you start saying, okay, I have a budget, I don't really know how I'm going to, you know, get people to do what I, I need them to do for my business, but my business is actually generating traffic and it's, you know, generating value. How do I bring that value to my business? Because the business is not just growing just because I have an image, it's because I have a reputable image, if you kind of go a little deeper into the layers. Because now, if I upload an image that I took that picture, or I hired a photographer, or I worked with a business, or I hired, or I outsourced, or maybe I did some user-generated content, and they give me those pictures, those are elements, right? Those elements are assets, and those assets are value-appreciating elements that are going to grow exponentially for your business. Your logo is an asset, but it's also an element too. It's an element of your business. When you have a letterhead in your business email, if you don't have that letterhead in your business email or in that, that document, that could separate, a, 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 that's a thin line, a fine line between signing that document and not signing it because there's no logo there. So when you really think about the elements of your business down to the file name, and you start thinking differently, that's why I'm really like challenge your minds tonight and, and this morning, you know, cause it's a global app. So wherever you're in the world, I wanna make sure that you get this information. Cause I also know the replays are on too for you guys to check this out later. So whatever time of day it is, whatever day of the week it is, you know, whatever month of the year it is, make sure that every single time your website is being updated you and you're bringing people in, if you own a domain, if you own a link that is always, you're telling people, go here, go here, click here, click here. Make sure you put your house in order before you bring them over. Because if you don't bring them to a good place where they get a good experience, they're not going to come back. So you want to make sure that you're building those things consistently for your business. So that stock image thing is very touchy, but you can go around it. But as you grow in your business, I would say make sure that even if you're using stock images, even if you've bought them, even though they're licensed, even though they're royalty free, even though they are images you can use, great, just use them. Even if it's AI, because you can use images now with AI, which works actually with SEO these days. When you put AI with your images, it also sparks you know inspiration because it's art. So it also you know drives engagement. By the way, with emojis too. So if you use those things with, as elements within your website and you use those images, great. But as you grow in your business, let's say you're five years in in your business and you've profited, let's say 20% year over year, for example, and you've not put a budget, even if it's 5%, for example, into photography or into, you know, taking pictures of your team or, you know, maybe connecting with people and running an advertising campaign that you can use as assets for your homepage and you've not put any advertising or marketing value into your business and you've been running it for over a number of years, maybe one to three years, because usually one to three years is that tipping point. And then from three to five is that growth point. And then in, in the seventh year is when you become an IPO, an initial public offering. So when you start thinking about the long-term effect of your business, how you want to scale from year one to year seven, you have to see how that can grow and see, okay, I'm doing blogs today. It may not look like anything, but in five years from now, if I have to sell my business, one of the things I have to sell is my website. And if my website has a resource that people come to this website every day for traffic and this website is down, I'm going to be doing a disservice to my community, then that's also going to impact the economy, especially for you too, Maya, because you're also in that funding. So imagine using all these articles and you're impact impacting people with small businesses and they're signing up to your mailing list and you're building connections with them. Before you know it, you're building connections that will last a lifetime. So when you do those things from the beginning of the search, to the end of the search, 
then you can start to see some people grow. And before you know it, your business just starts to take off. You don't have to write any more blogs. You've answered all the questions in the world and you have assets to prove it. And that's why you think about these big corporations. When you call them, hey, support. And then you ask them a question. They say, hey, you know, check your email. We sent you a link to the resource to help you figure out how to do this. They're not going to spend five minutes telling you on the phone. They're going to send you an email to the link to their website because that's a domain property they own. And that's an element that you need to improve your asset for your business. So if you kind of like reverse gear the whole thing, you can see that it can go a long way. Awesome. I want, welcome to Tundra and I would love to hear from you. Ash, thank you for being here with us. Do you have a question or contribution? Yeah. So are you able to hear me pretty well? Yes. Okay. Um, so you answered one part of my question as far as the AI goes. Now, I'm a person who takes pictures and make them 3D. So for my gallery, I think you answered it already now that I'm sitting here listening to it. But my, my question was, so for my gallery to show my artwork and things like that, do I, I have alternate text for like, hey, here is the picture logo and then here's the 3D. So I kind of, so you're saying to like have some SEOs inside that alternate text? Yes. In, okay. in, that, in that alternate text, you want to be as concise and precise as possible because the more detail you can give in a shorter time, the faster the algorithm can process your element, which can accelerate the impact for your visibility. Okay, I have one more question. So the next question I have is, yes, I take companies' logos and make them 3D, and I have the alternate text, but when they go to my website and they see this, should I put the link to the company's the other company's website in that alternate text as well? When you say the company's website, do you mean the URL? Yeah, yeah. The URL. Oh, no. Don't put it in the alternate text because that is a screen reader. So if the screen is going to read it, it's probably going to read it letter for letter, and that's going to take a longer time for the algorithm to process, which you're, you're kind of like giving the algorithm more work to do. So when you think about even what you're doing with all text, if I usually like to put it between three to five words, if I'm really stretching it, maybe seven. If I'm really like kind of stretching, stretching, stretching it, I might go to 13. But I only go there if I'm really being specific about something specifically to the context of the message. So if it's something like you just have a picture of a sunset or you have a picture of something that is more like, you know, subject heavy, you don't have to go into too much detail and just describe, oh, this is a green cauliflower, you know, by this and that with a brown, da, 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 da. before you know it, the colors, the elements, the keywords are in, in there. If it's an article talking about something specific, like give me, a, give me an example of one your, of your pictures, your AI pictures or with Mid Journey. Yeah, so one I have is a picture of Tupac and uh, no, let's use this one. I did a logo for someone called Boss Lady Creations with the S. I got to remember to say the S, the extra S. And I, um, I haven't uploaded it to my website yet, but I was listening to you and I was like, should I put her link to her web, to her page on my website? I mean, I don't mind. It doesn't bother me, but yeah. If you put a link and you're linking both websites because you want to build that relationship, it's possible, but not within the alt text. I would just tag the image and link it to that page if you want to put it there. Because I know some businesses like they can put on their homepage here are clients we've worked with or here are partners we've worked with. And then when they now upload those logos, right? Let's say you've worked with Shell, for example, Shell dash logo dash brand dash partnership and then you put that low and maybe even put the the name of the business you know and your business in there too just to keep the long tail keyword in mind because the naming convention also helps with the algorithm when it comes to search because your images have been curated and anything that you upload kind of goes into not really kind of but really goes into google images you may not see it but it's there because it's a library so you may not even find it if you're not optimized 
So if you have an image and you put those images and you, you have a clickable image and that clickable image takes them to your website. So for example, for you, Ash, if you link it out to theirs and they link it out to yours, but you have to ask first because some people just, you know, build your website and then they tag their own website there. I, that, I call that an, an ethical, you know, for business with, without integrity, because I would tell you, hey, can we share links? Because I know what that means in the in the long scheme of things, I know that that link that I'm putting there, if we don't remove that link and that website is still active for years on by, I can still get access as a backlink profile because we connected those two. So it's great to connect both links, but you also have to make sure that that is agreed on between both parties. And on top of that, if you're putting that link there, make sure that the link is descriptive. And if that's something you're going to do, even in the alt text, you can also refer to that too, you know, within the concise, you know, precision of how you, you know, layer the text. So you can put it that way, but don't put the link in the alt text because that's a lot of free real estate space that you are missing out on because you could put something else there that's more descriptive. Does that help? Yes. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. You're welcome. Here, Tandra, we'd love to hear your thoughts and then pass it to you, Lisa, and then we'll go to Hussan. Hey, Favor, good morning. Um, all I'm going to say is uh, I, I need to get my SEO together. And and I, I know I do. I know I'm behind. Uh, I feel like I'm getting like a little bit of a whooping, but it's okay. Um, but <laughs> no, but I think um, like being in your rooms has, has caused me to realize exactly how important it is. And so... Um, it is definitely something that we we have in our plans to make sure that we get working. <laughs> like <at least. laughs> I know, I know. It's a you know, it's a um, it's a whole it's a whole thing in and of itself. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Lisa going crazy. Pass it to you, Lisa. You know, I'm up here instigating. <laughs> Um, no, you know, um, you're working on my website. I'm sitting here listening cause, because, again, um, I'm realizing the importance of the fact that you're doing it <laughs> and that I'm not trying to do it because it would be a hot mess. And I've seen some websites that were a hot mess and I went to them, looked and went away because I figured this is how this person is running their business. Their business must be a hot mess too. So, you know, I'm not put, getting my credit card information on a website that looks like a toddler put it together. So, yeah, again, I'm a registered dietitian. I'm going to stay in the lane of being a registered dietitian. I'm going to let you do my CEO. I'm going to say CEO. SEO, I'm going to let you build my website. And anything else in that realm that I don't understand, a times where I go to for business strategy, et cetera, et cetera, and, and on down the line. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate you. It, it's so true. You know, precision is key. And you can do your own website. You can make it on your own. 100% do it. I, I challenge you and do it re really good. But if you think about the time you're investing and the time you're spending and you have someone that can do it with you, it's much easier because now you're really considering the long-term plan because you can build a website today and then end up to do a whole new website tomorrow because you didn't do something right or something just went wrong or you didn't choose the right foundation. It, it, it's so much into the layering that it can go really deep. So appreciate you, Lisa. Thank you for that. And Atandra, you're right too. We need to get that SEO in check. And the reason why I'm saying this is because you're using a lot of content on Instagram that could be seen on Google. I'll just leave it at that. Oh, I swear. I swear to God. <laughs> I feel like I get in trouble every time I come in one of your rooms. Next time I'm gonna let's, next time I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take the link next time and click on it in Chrome. And then that way it'll have me watch it on the on the um on the web browser so you can't see me in a room so i don't get in trouble 
<laughs> Atandra, we love you out here. <laughs> it's so great. It's so great that you're here. I appreciate you. I can't wait. You know, it's, it's going to happen. Sometimes it may take a long time, but trust me, when you look at it, you're like, damn, why was I not doing this a month ago, a year ago, two years ago? And then when it happens, you're like, oh, but for me, I'm like, you know, I'm going to keep doing it. The ones who are going to do it, going to do it. And then we're going to make it work and, um, you know, have a great time. Before I go to you, Hussan, I see Shay in the building. I wanted to just let you know, Shay, um, I was doing research and um, I owe you something. <laughs> so I owe you something. And I thought about it. I've been, you've been in my head living for like rent free. And I've been like, Shay, I need to get out to you because I looked at some stats and the article, the, 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 the podcast episode we did has literally hit like top 10 on on the podcast show because you talked about what? something yeah because you she talked about she lost how much like was it 50 pounds you said yeah it was 50 pounds man 50 pounds now but yeah <laughs> yeah and people have listened to that episode and then and, and learned from shay shay i don't know if you know but people have learned from you and I just wanted to tell you thank you for, you know, giving us that opportunity to, you know, hear your story on the podcast. And because this is something we did probably what two years ago? Was it two years ago? Yes, my first podcast. Uh, thank you so much. I have it on my uh, website and everything. You're welcome. You see, two years ago, you see what's doing now, two years later. Think about what could happen two years from now. The the sky is it's not even the limit. Like it's beyond it's it's in your imagination. If you want to make it happen, you can do it. So thank you, Shay. Just wanted to appreciate you. I want to go to you, Hassan, to ask if you have a question or contribution, and I'll come back to you, Shay, because I'd love to hear your feedback. Um go ahead, Hassan. Yeah, mine will be quick actually, because what you guys have discussed had a lot to do with my question. Um, you already recommended if we can do it, you would challenge us to build our own website. Um, and that was my question. I'm a bit, I'm an amateur when it comes to it, but I have a few little skills. And so I was wondering, do I hire out and then deal with that full dynamic or make it the way that I want it, you know, in the reflection of, of my business. And so I heard the challenge and I think I'm going to uh, receive that as an answer. So I'll just pass it back because you guys are giving some, some great, uh, some great stuff here. So I'll listen. Thank you. Wow. I'm so appreciative of that, Hussan. Thank you so much for that feedback. I didn't see that coming because, you know, Ash came, the question was answered, Hussan came, the question was answered. So I'm, I'm so happy that we're on the same page. And that also lets me know that we're speaking the same language and we're working towards a goal together. Because I just don't want to talk about this. I want us to, to do it, take action, so that when we look at our numbers a year from now, a month from now, a quarter from now, you know, you can really appreciate that you spend those five hours a week just focusing on your business and focusing on what you're showing people. Because if you can send them one email, one post and talk about your personal business growth, send them one email talking about your expertise and one post talk promoting your offer, at least, then you're letting people learn about you. I know about my audience now. I know they're homeowners. I know they're family, you know, based. I know they, they live in, you know, different parts of the cities and states. I know what they love listening to. I know what podcasts they love listening to. I know their music. I know their taste. So I know what to say. And I know what I know what they like. So if I bring people on board and I see what they like, then I'll bring more people. So that's really where it boils down to. And it, it starts off with just dedication. Like this podcast, I'm four years in. Started 2019. We're over 300 episodes now. In seven seasons, hit about 60 countries, 80% of them are in the U.S., 20% of the rest of the world, and we're still going strong because in the fifth year, I really want to do like a round table of like the top episodes and bring them all together, and Shay is going to be one of them. So I'm going to pass it to you, Shay, um, to ask you like what has been your journey like two years between then and now when it comes to transformation and mindset and even your website too? Hey, are you able to hear me? Yeah. Okay. Sorry if it's loud, I'm at the gym. Um it's um it's been going up from there honestly. Um uh this year I'll speed it up. I was on my first uh T V appearance. 
uh, talking about my uh, health and wellness brand is Chill Green Eat, my meal prep service here in St. Louis. So that's the biggest, my biggest accomplishment, I would say. And um, my website, I've been working on it as much as possible. I still need a, a few little tweaks to it. Uh, I just messaged you on uh, Instagram about that. I had a question about, because I can't get the Squarespace to get out of my main site. I don't know if that's something that's the settings or what. But um, I've been blogging. I've added blogging to my uh, website now, though, which is cool. So I do, like, uh, breakfast tips or breakfast meals of the week or something like that. So I've been learning a lot about the SEO and just going in these rooms. It helps a lot. Thank you, Shay. I appreciate that. I just saw the message too. Um, to the Squarespace question, I know my question to you, and this will help me clarify this for the answer, is when you type it in, do you see it on Google search? Like when you type it in, do you see it on the front page or do you just see it on the back end? I don't know if it's because I'm an admin, but I see it I see it every time I, I put in my stlgmus.com and then it's just when I click it, it goes to Squarespace. It has it in a, I guess you would say the Google part. Okay. If it's a Google part, then it's definitely your metadata files. Their the, the metadata fills with Squarespace because we build Squarespace websites, Wix websites, WordPress. We're not limited by any website. As long as we can build it and it's possible, we can do it. So with Squarespace, you know, that's specific. So I know that's the metadata fields. And usually why you're possibly seeing that because, you know, building Squarespace, I know that they usually set that as, as a default. So when they set it as a default, they're going to see the Squarespace site. And another possibility could be that's possibly the default name within your settings. Like you mentioned earlier in the text, the settings part, that could be a place we could check. So I can't really say, but I would love to see it. And so you can share your screen. And I think that would be great if you, you know, click the link above my head. And then once you put your contact information and then get on the calendar, then we can look at it and then, you know, talk about what you're planning, especially with the meal prep. It's a big thing. Pinterest is a place I want you to discover for 2024 because that's also a great place where you can actually thrive because people go on those platforms to look for things to do from a positive mindset. And if majority of people that are on Pinterest also use Instagram, then you can use those two together for business. So you're not just using Pinterest just for posting, but using it for positioning. So we'll talk about that, but that's the answer. Um, I don't know, does that help? And we can clarify it more, but does that give you an idea? Oh, uh, yes, it does. I'm going to um, do that now. Thanks. Awesome. You're most welcome. This was great. I'm glad that we did this. We've had an, an hour and a half here. And I, um, you know, I, I love that we've, you know, been able to take some information in. If you're here in the chat, just put in the chat, what have you learned today? Just put in the chat in two, three words really quickly. You don't have to, you know, say the whole thing, but just let me know in the chat, what have you learned? So what have you learned that is new? Cause that's also gonna help me know what to come back and talk about and, you know, give value. Cause you know, Maya has brought some great value today. Hussan, Ash, Shay, Lisa, Atondra, Rocky was here earlier, Olisa, Ty, Terry, Ryan, Dr. Sharon, Pauline, Chrissy, Lorna, Leah, Michelle, Elaine, the Wiser Tiger, Deborah, Drew, Raquel, and Andrea. Appreciate you all for being here. You are all amazing. And this room wouldn't have been the way it is without you. You know, we are, you know, 24 people in this room right now and i love that you guys are here i've seen some pink tickets come in and out so it also shows that the algorithm is pushing out the rooms i don't give up on clubhouse because this is where i've met a lot of people that i've connected with today that if it wasn't for this app i would never have met them and i appreciate each and every one of the people i've met in person and also virtually and i'm yet to meet so that's why i hold this app dearly and the reason why i'm purposefully here is because I'm using this as an extension of my podcast because I joined 2020, a year after the podcast launched. So I'm using this as an extension for the podcast to connect to more people, let more people hear other voices and learn from them and learn from experiences so that we can all do this thing together. I can't do it by myself. So let me see, two years from now, <laughs> who said two years from now, I love that. 
that's futuristic. Maya says, how to search for keywords. Okay, Helene says, the easy search on Google. Yes, that's a gem right there. Like if you use that only, you, you don't need to pay for subscriptions. Just use that and use it and see, be, in, read in between the lines, you'll be great if you can respond back to those you know, features. Um, Ryan says, how to search Google for keywords. Yes, okay. So the keywords is, is important. So that tells me that um, keywords is a major thing because I usually say keywords are the keys to your business. If you don't put the right keywords on your map, your site map, which is your website, your web page, the page that people read on, that they watch, that they view, that they check out your Instagram, they check out your TikTok, they check out your everything. If those things are not positioned, then you won't be able to get the right placement. So positioning equals to sales. That's one thing I want you guys to leave with. Positioning equals to sales. If you position yourself in the right place, you're going to get sales. That's why Kroger, Publix, you know, all these stores, Walmart, when you go to the produce, you know where it is. It's right, as soon as you walk in, it's right there because that's the first thing that you're going to do, positioning. So when you look at it from a business, I kind of like open it up a little wider. So when you when you think about it that way and you position yourself and you know that when I walk in, I know I'm going to go to the produce because this is how it positions. Then I know I'm going to start off with my oranges, my fresh produce. Why did I say oranges? Your fresh produce. I think I'm going to get some oranges after this. And then... Um, you know, I'll go downstairs and get it. So you you position yourself in a position that you can access attention. And that access to attention is by putting your elements of your images, your videos, your social posts, you know, your emails, all those things, put them together and then build it out every year. We're getting into the new year. Another challenge I'm gonna give you guys as you're building out your websites is when you build your website, look at the footer of your website. If that website says 2022, and we're in 2023, you need to go and change it today. By January 1st, 2024, you need to go back there and change it to 2024. And if you want to use both years, you can do copyright the year that your, your company was incorporated till 2024. So let's say your company was incorporated in 1999. So it'll be 1999 to 2023. And then in the new year, you'd switch the three to the four. So if you want to do it that way, great. If you want to just keep the current year, great but change the year. It's gonna impact your website greatly because in the new year, the algorithm is gonna start looking at 2024 collections and 2024 you know, data. So I'm just giving you guys a heads up real quick. Lisa, what did you wanna say? I saw your eyes looking. <laughs> She's like, okay. <laughs> All right, Lisa, no problem. Um, let me know if you can speak. But I appreciate you guys for being here. Um, this was a great session. I really hope to connect with you guys you know, very soon. And uh, let's make this happen. I'll be back again um, on this app on Clubhouse. I think I'll be doing more morning rooms. Put a one in the chat if you guys, and this is feedback for me. Put a one in the chat if this is a good time for rooms. This is going to help me, actually. I'm so glad I asked this question. <sighs> Thank God I asked this question. Put a one in the chat if you, if this is a good time for rooms. If this is a good time for you guys to have rooms, like, because I started this room at 7.30 a.m. Eastern, because I know we're in different time zones, and I want to respect everyone's time. So, and we're also an international, because I know, Ryan, you're in, in, in the U.K. So, okay, so one's good. So, my one, Ryan, one. <laughs> Sam says zero. <laughs> Why you say zero? It's not a good time. Do you like late nights, evenings, afternoons? Is it better for you? Oh, you're in Cali. Yeah, I forgot I was on the stage. Yeah, so for me, it's a little bit early. I happen to be up. I'm taking my morning walk, but I just caught you at the tail end of your room. So one hour forward would be helpful to me, but I'm obviously thinking about what's good for the group. You know what I'm going to do? I'm probably going to do like a two hour session because I'm going to do like, because I usually do one hour sessions and I feel like one hour is not enough these days. So I'll extend it and probably do like two to three hour sessions and maybe do that once a week. I'll see how that stretches. But that feedback you guys have given me is so helpful. So I appreciate the feedback because it helps me know what to do. Because when you show up on the app, it's because you're showing up knowing there's a room. 
you know, you tune into the frequency because you know that there's something happening at that time. So I want to make sure you guys are aware and content aware too. So that means I also have to schedule my rooms in advance so that you guys can see it within the hallway and within your events calendar. And what I like to do is add those, the rooms that we have on Clubhouse. I'll, I just do this for my own scheduling. I add the events to my Apple calendar. So you can add it to your Apple calendar or your Google calendar. But if you see the room and you want to join, add it to your calendar so that you can show up you know, when the room's, you know, live. That's a good way to also, you know, be here too. So I'm going to do it in the mornings. I'm going to see how I'm going to do a two-hour session. And then some sessions I'm going to be using my screen. I'm going to bring you guys on Zoom. I really want to make this interactive. I just don't want to talk. I want to see you guys take action. And I want to come back a year from now, three months from now, hearing results. You know, it's results. And people are driving too. You see, Deborah is, um, is driving in Central, so driving to work. Wow. So you see, so everybody's moving. So I have to make sure that even if I, if you don't have the room or you miss the room, at least you heard it and you can know where you can get the resource. And that's why I'm giving this opportunity to you guys to take, you know, in and have an accountability partner you can work with so that you can actually see, you know, where it's going and, and where it's taking you to the next level. So you're, you're welcome, Deborah. You're welcome. You're most welcome. So, yeah. For those who are here, the replays are on because I know most of you were not here the whole time. So click the link, you know, replay morningly. Click this link above here. And you can get to work with us all year or within the first quarter just to get set up. But you need to book before the December 31st, 11.59 clock hits. So make sure you sign up, you leave your contact information, and then you will get you know, to the calendar, book a schedule with me, and then we can get on the call for 30 minutes. I want to learn more about your business. And before we get on that call, I'm going to audit your site. I'm just letting you know. I always do that before I connect with people on calls, especially if it's our first time meeting. So I'm going to go to your website. I'm just telling you full transparency. I'm going to go to your website and I'm going to see what it is. I'll audit it so that when we have our 30 minutes, we use those 30 minutes with context, with value, and with progress so that we can make, you know, actionable steps and not just be ambiguous about the, you know, elephant in the room. So I appreciate you guys for listening and being here. And I hope you guys have taken notes and take action too. So take this action and then let me know if you guys have any questions. Send me a voice message on Clubhouse. Send me a message on Instagram. I'm accessible. And when if you get the emails, you also get access to my digital business card. So you always have access to me as well. <laughs> Shay says, don't beat me up too bad. I ain't going to beat you up too bad. <laughs> it's going to be light. It's going to be light. But trust me, once you look at it a year from now, you'll be like, whoa, these little things go a long way. And I'm definitely excited to share that journey with y'all. Awesome. So guys, have an amazing day. Enjoy your Wednesday. Have a great time. Uh, Lisa, you have a room. You said your room is, is it today or it's on, did you say Friday? Hey, yeah, my room is on Friday. Friday, okay. Friday at 12 p.m. EST, we're going to be talking about functional foods. Ooh, I like that. Functional foods. Functional foods. When I hear the word function, you know how many things we eat that makes us not to function? <laughs> Come to think of it. So, yeah, I can't wait for that room. I can't wait for that. Okay. Thank you so much for that, Lisa. And the replays are on. And Shay's agreeing to that, too, because she's at the gym, you know. One thing for me, y'all, that I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> and this is something I'm putting for myself, and I'm so glad I think I, I was told that I think LA Fitness does it. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Shay, if you go to LA Fitness, but the swimming pool, you during the wintertime, um, they, they warm up the pool. And I think I've tried it once, but I don't know if it's still something that they do, but they warm up the pool because one of the things I want to do, and whether it's cold or not, I'll still swim. I'll swim in the sea too, in the ocean. And if you swim, one of the things I want to do for myself is swim more because the more I'm able to swim, you know, the, the health, the physical, everything just gets into place because I also play soccer too. So I'm very active. So when I think about the foods I'm eating, I also need to know what foods I'm putting in. Yes, we're doing business. But health is wealth. If you guys are not in good health state, you can't work. You can't help your family. You can't do much. So for me, I take health as a priority. You know, it's, it's a big thing. We can't function if we can't function. <laughs> so simple point blank period. So thank you, Lisa, for that. And I can't wait for that room as well. Yeah, Mo, you're late, bro. I'm sorry. This room started like almost like 7.30 a.m. Eastern. So I had to ask everyone, you know, 
what times they're available so that I'm also there and I'm able to give people, you know, insight. You know, Tracy came in, Vanessa came in, Darren, Derek, Andrea, Visions. Y'all, <laughs> I need to do these rooms and schedule them so you guys know when I'm doing the rooms. So I'm making that uh, a task for myself to do that because all these things I'm talking about with physical training, you know, mindset, I'm up early. Let me see how I can incorporate all these things so that, you know, even in the morning, I can go to the gym, you know, swim, come back, do a room on Clubhouse, get work done. I've accomplished a lot of stuff. Yeah, I'm thinking out loud because I think this is a great time for me to be intentional and show up on Clubhouse and, and help you guys because we're not just here to talk. We're here to help each other. We're here to learn from each other. My know something I don't. I know something she doesn't and other people know something I don't and vice versa. And we all know something that we can help with. So we are all geniuses and we can all, you know, collaborate. So collaboration over competition is my motto. So thank you so much, guys, and have an amazing Wednesday. I'm going to catch you guys soon. Click the link, listen to replay, take action, and I'll see you in the next room. I'm going to do another one like this tomorrow, possibly. So I'm going to look at the schedule. And if it's on the schedule, just check out in the social with Rocky House and you'll see it there. So I'm going to be doing this more consistently. Thank you, everyone. Take care. God bless and have a great day.